In this next set of videos, we'll start exploring some of the properties of power law distributions. We'll see that they have long tails, I'll say what that means, and that they're, they're um, scale-free or self-similar, just like fractals are. So recall that fractals, these are objects that have structure um, on many different scales. The same shapes repeat at larger and smaller sizes. And so one of the consequences of this is that if you were shrunk and put in a fractal, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that you had been shrunk because fractals don't have any typical or uh, characteristic scale or size. And what we'll see is that mathematically, the same is the case for power law distributions, that power law distribu distributions are scale-free or self-similar. In order to demonstrate that power law distributions are scale-free, I'm going to compare and contrast power law and exponential distributions. So here's a power law distribution. It's essentially the same as for the word frequency in Moby Dick, but I made this exponent exactly minus two, just so we can work with it a little more easily. And then this is the distribution that requires the number of attempts it would take for me to crumple up a piece of paper and throw it into the um, recycling. Made it. Um, so this is, strictly speaking, you'll call this maybe a geometric distribution but it is an exponential decay, so I'm gonna call this exponential because that's the key feature here. All right, so let's see what these distributions look like. And we've looked at them before. So here's the power law. It starts off at 0.6, it goes down. And here is the exponential. It starts at 0.33. There's a 33% chance, a one in three chance that I'm successful in my first toss like it was a moment ago. And then is, this also decays quickly. Now these are only defined for x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, but I'm going to draw this as a continuous curve anyway. Okay, so let's now think about what would happen if I looked at this power law distribution at a different scale. So to do that, I'm going to plot the power law not from 1 to 10, but from 10 to 100. And what we see is that it still looks like a power law. In fact, it's um, exactly the same function. So this function, this distribution, is self-similar. One way to see that, you can take these two, and it turns out, it may be a little hard to see, but they happen to line up um, <coughs> exactly. So these are exactly uh, the same curve. Instead of looking at a scale of 100, you look at it at a scale of 10, and it looks the same. So now let's see about the exponential. So here's the exponential from 1 to 10. What happens if we look at that from 10 to 100? Well, it most definitely does not look the same. Get these over in the middle a little bit so they're more, vi more visible. So here's the exponential from 1 to 10, and here's the exponential from 10 to 100. So it crashes very quickly and is indistinguishable from zero by the time we hit 30. So another way of thinking about this is that um, suppose I didn't draw on a, the scales. So I didn't tell you what these labels were. The power law you couldn't tell. A power law always looks like a power law, no matter what scale you look at it. Just like Sierpinski triangles, you see Sierpinski triangles, no matter what scale you look at. An exponential, however, you could tell there's a characteristic scale here. The exponential curve, this distribution, changes as we change the scale at which we look at it. So, we would say that the power law distribution is a scale-free distribution. It's a power law no matter what scale you look at it. Whereas the exponential distribution, and in fact all other distributions, are not scale-free. Here's another way to think about how power laws are scale-free. So mathematically, we're gonna work with the same formula, but now instead of thinking about word frequency, I'm gonna imagine that this describes a distribution of branches in some tree so that this expression gives a probability 
that a branch has a particular length. So let's imagine that um, you were shrunk or expanded, you don't know your size, and you're looking for clues about scale inside of a tree whose branches are described by this. So let's say we're interested in P of 4. What's the probability that a branch has length 4? So let's see. I can figure that out by just plugging in 4 to this formula. So let's do that. 4y to the x minus 2, fine, times 0 0.61. And I get 0 0.038125. Then I could also ask about p2. Suppose I'm this size, or I think I'm this size. Um, and I want to know how many branches are there that are half of my size. Well, I can calculate that again just into this formula, plugging 2, 2y to the x. And I get 0 0.1525. And let me do one more. Let's think about P8. So 8, 2. 0 0.00953. Okay, so suppose we're here, and we're looking at branches of length 4, and I want to know how do those compare to branches of length 2. So I'm going to take this number and divide it by that. 0 0.1525 divided by 0 0.038. Uh oh, sorry. 0 0.1525. 525 divided by 0 0.038125 equals, and I get 4. So what that means is, thinking about going from here to here, it means that there are four times as many branches that are half this size. Four times as many branches that or half this size. So the idea here is that these branches are four times as likely, and if they're four times as likely, that must be because there are four times as many of them. All right, now let's think about going from here to here. So again, I'm going to take this, divide it by that. 0 0.038125 divided by 0 0.00953, and I get 4.0005, so essentially 4. So that means that the same thing holds. There are four times as many branches that are half of this size. So you can't use this distribution to figure out where you are in it if you don't already know. If you're looking at branches of some particular size, well, if you then want to know how many branches are there that are half this size, they're four times as many. But that's true no matter where you are in this distribution. Um, so that's another way of seeing that uh, power laws like this are scale-free. And if this uh, mathematics seems familiar to you, uh, perhaps it should. This is essentially, not essentially, this is what we were doing in the previous unit with box counting. There we saw that every time, say if we had a two-dimensional object, every time we halved the size of boxes, we had four times as many of them. And that that was constant uh, across the shape. And so uh, we're seeing a similar thing here, except now we're looking at branches or whatever, it doesn't matter what we're looking at. You could tell the story about anything, and we're seeing this scale-free behavior. Okay, so um, lastly, let me just illustrate a counterexample. I want to show you that we won't see this sort of scale-free behavior if we do the same um, bit of numerical work with an exponential distribution. So let's do the same thing with this exponential or geometric distribution. 
So again, we could think about uh, using this to describe me tossing paper into the recycling bin or branches in a tree or whatever. The mathematics is the same, but I'll talk about branches, I guess, since that was the previous example. And we can say, all right, what about P4? What is the probability that a branch has length four or that in a particular, for a particular piece of paper, it takes me four times to toss it into the uh, can? All right, so I can just plug four in here. Four uh, minus one is three, so I've got two thirds cubed times a third, and I get uh, 0 0.0988. So I'm just plugging into this formula. I can do the same thing, and I won't do all the calculator work because I've done it ahead of time. And P of 8. Again, just plug into the calculator, plug into the formula, 0 0.0195. All right. So now I might say, how many more of these are there than those? How much more likely is this than that? So I can just divide 0 0.2222 divided by 0 0.0988. And I get about 2 and a quarter. So there are around 2.25 times as many branches or whatever that are half this size. All right. What about here? What about if I'm thinking about branches of length 8 and I want to know how much more likely are branches of length 4? So let's divide. Let's take the ratio. 0 0.0988 divided by 0 0.0195 and 5.07. So that means there are around 5.07 times as many branches. So exponentials are not scale-free. Um, you can figure out where you are in an exponential distribution because these ratios change all the time, whereas those ratios don't change if you're in a power law, um, in a power law distribution. Uh, another way of saying this, uh, power laws exhibit scaling. We see the same feature in this case, four times as many branches that are half this size, four times as many branches that are half this size. Um, all throughout the entire power law, this is going to be true for any x. Exponentials are not scale-free. They don't exhibit scaling because this relationship is not constant across scales.